Konnichiwar, Vatashiwar, Heinbach, Hades. It's good to have you back. The instrument I have in front of me today is one of the rarest synthesizers I have come across so far. The Suiko ST50. This instrument wasn't meant for expert, this was meant for traditional Japanese music and to accompany poems. It's a classical instrument in that regard. Because Suiko targeted the local Japanese market, all the inscriptions here are in Japanese. And I had to use Google Translate and the help from Kemek Music to translate what part of these means. Through him I tried contacting the company itself, thinking I could maybe get a manual, but there's no one at the company who speaks English and everyone who worked on this, because this was made about 20 years or more ago, is not there anymore. So they didn't have any help in finding out more about this beautiful instrument. Before we have a closer look, let's listen to some sounds. <laughs>
as you could hear, most of these sounds are from traditional Japanese instruments, except for maybe the synthesizer and the strings. But they have their own special magic because they were captured to be, yeah, they're just very pretty. Though you will find this described as a Koto synthesizer, this is more of a ROM player, meaning there are samples in here that you can shape in some ways, but yeah, this is sample based and not a physical modeling synthesizer or something like that. And there's one thing that's a bit sad. There's no round robin, meaning the same sample is triggered every time we hit a key. So that becomes quickly repetitive. <laughs> But that can be forgiven due to the general quality of sounds on here and the way they are played. You can really hear that Suiku know what they were doing and they were going for a very poetic instrument that I find fits in today's electronic music well. Let's have a look at the functions. Here's the on off button and this enables us to switch between western tuning and just intonation which is the Japanese tuning. This is just the volume control and here we can adjust the pitch in quarter and half steps. This is for transposing up to an octave and this is the sound selector. This sets the speed of a repetitive effect that is apparently very common in Japanese traditional music. It's interesting how robotic that effect becomes when you set it to very fast and you can hear the same sample being repeated like, yeah, like a machine gun. Here's the control over a beautifully weird chorus that can be switched on using this button. vibrato, somewhere in between. With this on some sounds we can shape the release. And here we can set the volume for the automatic accompaniment, which is something I couldn't get to run. All of these here are in some way related to auto accompaniment and you can apparently record your own, but you need a card for that. And yeah, that card is not available anymore. And if someone of you has one, please, I would love to try it and borrow it. There is a little something stored in here, which I can access by hitting this. But else this section remains a mystery and until I find a card I think it will remain a mystery. The button keyboard here is probably like the frets on a Koto so it doesn't go like a normal keyboard would and there's no black or white keys. <laughs> I still need to map where all the notes are, but right now I like being surprised because this interface yeah, frees me from the traditional keyboard playing style that I've been used to since I was five. It's also possible to sweep sounds in using the volume control here. And this is rather heavy, so this is not easy to move. This has a decent amount of push and pull to it and snaps right back. And we can move the pitch with the pitch bend here. To add chords to a note, you can use these four buttons. These give you traditional Japanese harmonic relationships.
and again are a nice way to break out of the Western music mindset, which to me is part of the whole appeal of this beautiful little instrument. The whole instrument doesn't weigh a lot and it's powered by a regular 9 volt jack. It has outputs for left and right and a headphone output and I inserted this cable so yeah, the loudspeakers turn off because those are always on unless the headphone is plugged in. So let me turn off the main speakers here and let's listen to the loudspeakers. <laughs> As you can hear, they knew what they put in there. For a unit of this size, these loudspeakers are amazing. So this becomes an instrument you can take to a campfire and play there. Especially because it is also powered by batteries. As you can see, the battery compartment on mine has found leakage. You can see all the acid from the battery. I will probably have to clean this and maybe even renew the contacts before I can play this with batteries. Or I'll just use a USB battery and one of the appropriate ripcord cables. Now let's make a track with this. And I'm gonna keep it simple by keeping it all as you would back in the day, using only this Fostec multi-tracker and an Alesis wedge. Now I wanna start with a rhythm and I'm going to record that onto this loop tape so I can later pitch it down to half speed, the best speed as it's been known also. And yeah, that might be a little wonky because of course it will never be exactly in time due to the splice point and when I press stop, but it might be interesting. That might already be enough. That sounds quite nice. It's running through this wedge in the remix setting. Let's try some different drum settings here. There's so many good sounds in this. Oh, this is quite nice. Wall of guitar. Whoa, okay. It's a doubler. Okay, let's find another sound. Let's record that on one and two. Okay. Nice and ghostly, but maybe try something different than the wall of guitar. Let's go for my favorite one. Never fails. Darkness. That's where it's at. Darkness. And half speed.
I don't know what genre of synthwave that track is, but it should give you an idea why I really enjoy this instrument. There is something very cinematic and alive about these sounds and playing it just gives me a lot of new ideas. It's just something special and it's something that especially for scoring work I'm looking forward to use. Now I just need the proper excuse, the proper movie, game or theater play to put it into use for that. There are quite a bunch of different versions of this instrument, but I think the 50 and maybe the 100 are the most full-featured models. The other ones either feature an organ-like sound generation, which doesn't sound that great to me, or they have limited instruments. The Zwequest T50 was made in the mid 90s and I don't know for what it wielded back then, but if you want a unit now you have to buy it used and it costs between 350 to 500 dollars. If it costs more after this video, I'm sorry. As some of you might know, if you're on my Patreon you get sound packs of the instruments that I play and there are over 50 already on my Patreon. And for this one I'm going to record all the drum sounds through tape, so there's something extra special, and then I'll be uploading them in normal and in half speed for, yeah, your drum sampler needs. I will also upload the track I played in the end. And now, before my voice completely leaves me again, thank you all for watching, and if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below or visit the subreddit. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.